Welcome back to Objectivity. We are once again at the Royal Society with Keith, the boss of the library, mm -hmm. keeper of information and really interesting stuff. Yeah. Keith, what's in the box? Well, I think you should open it and find out, Brady. With pleasure. We have various wrapped items. We've got all these lovely parchmenty type papers that are all yellow and grey and written with ink and gets me all excited. You're easily excited, Brady. Uh, yeah, I yeah, am yeah. easily excited, particularly by palladium. Yep. A new metal for the period. It has written on here 1866. These are later uses of palladium. Okay. So uh, it's discovered in the early 19th century by William Hyde Wallace, who's a very important fellow of the Royal Society. So he discovers palladium. It's a brand new thing. Everyone's really mm. excited about it. And he gives some samples to the Royal Society. That's right, yes. So he gives samples of two things to the organisation. He and his friend, another scientist, Smithson Tennant, set up a, a mini business to uh, extract rare metals. Platinum was their thing. And in the course of doing that, they found lots of new elements, including Palladium. So when uh, William Hyde Wollaston was sorting out his affairs, he decided to give some samples of these rare metals to the Royal Society for the use of other scientists. Come on, I have to see them now. Oh yeah, if you sort your way down to the second wrapper there. So it says the palladium in this paper has been rolled from fused buttons. So they had little buttons of them, mm -hmm. put them together and then yep. squashed them into... Okay. Absolutely right. But actually what you've got in here is, is a mix of two different things. Uh, I think it's okay. partly that kind of rolled metal. But mm. you've also got ingots as well. We've got two ingots of metal here. We think one of these is palladium and one is platinum, or both are palladium? Uh, I think we'd have to send them off for testing to be, to be sure. They're pretty similar. You could probably tell by weight. But there's nothing really marked on them, I think, to tell you. In a way that some of the other uh, specimens here have, have the odd note and, and uh, just small scribble on them. You have to get them exactly in the right light to see some of this stuff. That looks like it's got PD written on it. Ah, right, OK. That's going to be palladium then. There's a piece of very early palladium coming from the guy who discovered palladium. Mm. So that's like, that's, that's as palladium-y as you can get. You can see this one's got an ink mark on. Again, it's very, very difficult to read, but it looks like there's a date on the top there, maybe 1816, just possibly. But these are pretty big chunks of metal, and you can see they've got some fairly rough edges here. So the fellows at the time... This is palladium again. It's got PD written on it. Ah, right. Yeah. They would have chopped pieces off for, for their own scientific purposes. So, Keith, this wouldn't have been given to the Royal Society as, like, a museum piece, him saying, look, this has come from me, the finder, so why don't you put mm. this in a glass cabinet? He's basically said, here's some metal, do some science with it. Absolutely right. And, and here's your PD again, so that's another piece of palladium there. And you can see there's a little bit of a, a strip coming out of that mm. there. Uh, I don't quite know what's happened there. I don't know. But from the associated letters, we know at least one person who worked with this material, and that was Michael Faraday, very important scientist well, indeed. that's one pretty big deal person. It's a pretty big deal person, yeah. So Faraday himself was taking little pieces of this to do some science. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of these documents. There's a little small strip in there. Yeah. It's just kind of interesting. It's kind of cut like a key. Oh, yeah. Maybe this is the skeleton key that unlocks the door to the mystery metal vault in the hidden depths of something at the mm. Royal Society. <laughs> you, you promised not to mention that. Uh. <laughs> cut, cut that chance. Cut. There's, no, there's no hidden vault of precious gems and metals. Is there? Is there a... <laughs> so anyway, we, we have a, a set of letters here from, from different periods. We can see here's a signature of Michael Faraday oh. uh, from the Royal Institution in 1845. That doesn't tell us very much, so he's just talking about a particular piece there. But I rather thought that I'd seen a rather more detailed inventory here. Ah, here it is. Account of the pieces of platina and palladium received from Dr. Wollaston. Oh, so this is the proper chain of custody document now. That's right. Mm. So this will tell us a little bit more about what was originally left, I think. Oh. Looks like 1834 or 36, account of the pieces of platina and palladium. And then it gives a list, and presumably these are pieces with weights attached. You can see we've got ingots here, flat, rolled pieces. So originally, you can see there are up to 19 pieces. And it looks like all the ingots are palladium, maybe. Maybe so, yes. You just say platina and palladium, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. 
this is really exciting though. Look, Michael Faraday mm. signed it. Michael Faraday was sorting all this stuff out. This is yeah, like, absolutely. So he's this like is, a this science is hero. He is a science hero. He's probably the best experimental scientist of the 19th century. Let's go forward in time from a time when these old metals were new and exciting, mm -hmm. to the era of plastic. I have seen this sitting on a shelf in the archive for years and we've never actually made a film about it, have we? No, we haven't. And it's something that kind of at first glance looks really boring. It's kind of a little spongy material and a little flat sheet. The clue is on the top though. You can see the jar there has the ICI logo on it. Imperial Chemical Industries, the great British chemical production company. It says polythene from the first hundred weight ever made. These specimens were made batchwise in three quarter litre vessels in late 1936 or early 1937. The sheet was prepared at Ardea from material taken there for evaluation. So this is like the beginning of plastic. Yeah, this is part of the first production runs of plastic. Plastic poly polyethylene is, is kind of semi-accidentally discovered through uh, a bit of white stuff in the bottom of a pressure vessel. And ICI is one of the companies trying to figure out what to do with this. So they produced some of it. It was a new material, a completely man-made material. But of course, it very quickly became pretty ubiquitous. So it's really the 20th century material. This is why I love coming here to the Royal Society, Keith. In one hand, palladium, the new trendy element of like the 19th century mm -hmm. and then here we have plastic the new trendy brand new out of the factory thing from the 20th century yeah what will it be next by the way if you'd like to see more about these samples of palladium and platinum and some letters and documents that go along with them we have previously done something on my chemistry channel periodic videos so we'll include a link to that on the screen and down in the video description